Well, hello everybody and welcome to our video. This is a Gabby one, but this video is a chit chat all about foods and all about what we've been doing for a couple of days. Uh, a blackout where our power was out for a whole day and what we did and how we got in and out of the house, we had to get out. And what we did when we came back and the power was off and it was still cold. Nanny is just being a pretty Gabby person in this video, but maybe you'll enjoy some of these stories. And we were doing a couple of fun things. Also, I made a little correction to my pea soup that you might want to give me some hints about and tell me whether you've done anything like this yourself. So stay tuned. I think you'll enjoy it. I even have a visit from Matthew. Popping Here's in. my Maddie, ready to go working for his mommy and daddy. Hello, <laughs> we've got some bulbs, a whole bunch of bulbs that uh, Moose and I are gonna go plant. For spring, what, tulips and what else, most daffodils? Yep, and hyacinth. Rhinoculus, right? Rhinoculus, Oh, sure. it's gonna be fun. And right here, look, Matthew, so it's ready to go out. Can you just do that after you finish yep. for me? Yep. <laughs> so much fun when the kids stop by. Oh my goodness, it looks so unchristmassy today, doesn't it? I haven't decided what to do up here yet. I took all the greens down and um, I had a bit of a disaster in some of my tubs. I had some tubs that I was using at Christmas. Um, a lot of the tubs with my, um, my wrapping paper and my bags and oh gosh, I had tons of it. And somehow the water got into those yellow tubs. I didn't have those covered up. The rest of them are all in the shed, but the ones I was using for Christmas were out. So I lost a whole tub of um, wrappings and stuff I've saved for a couple of years. And I hate to think what else got wet out there, but it's been raining for so long. Today's kind of nice, but no sun. So I still don't have my natural light coming in. You know, today is going to be um, just a mixed bag of everything. I um, made one of those great egg muffin breakfasts this morning for Moosey and I, a little bit different this time. Another yummy breakfast. So easy to do these little egg muffins with anything you want to throw in. This one. one of the other things that Dubby gave me for a Christmas present was this beautiful soft coach scarf. And I should have worn it today. It would have looked beautiful with this little camel hair outfit that I have on. This is that Walmart sweater, by the way. It's a hoodie. It's so soft, it's long, and I've shown it to you before. It also has matching knit pants that go with it. You know, the other day, I think I still saw them. They have it in gray and camel in Walmart. And I think they were even on sale, but isn't it a lovely outfit and cozy? I showed it to you in another video, so I won't stand up and show you again, but should have worn the scarf. I wanted to show you some of the gifts that we had gotten. In particular, look at this beautiful thing that came from Dubby, and it's part of that Nordic wear. Remember I had a uh, one of the Nordic wear pans that showed um, all the turkeys and, and acorns and beautiful muffins. I gave that one to little Megan and Lizzie, who are the bakers, Mikey's little girls. And uh, this one is just a beautiful forest of trees. Now I can still use it even though Christmas is over because I don't have to do it with green. I can put powdered sugar on it. And I do have um, a couple of recipes, but Nordic Ware gives you, this is upside down, Nordic Ware gives you some um, recipes inside, I think, in here. So when I make one of these, uh, it's a Bundt cake, and, and you can even use a box mix Bundt cake, 
but when I make it, isn't it pretty? I, and it's heavy. The, these Nordic wear pants are great. So this was one gift that I didn't share. I'll get to the gifts later. But back to my mantle and the, the mantle decor. I will put up one of my paintings again. Probably the snow one uh, that's kind of like a Grandma Moses. That hasn't been up in a while, so I think I'll put that up. And um, I have another one that Moose gave me about 20 years ago. And that he, Colleen and I were in an antique shop and I saw it and fell in love with it. And she told him and he got it for me that Christmas. And it's um, beautiful sheep. It's kind of dark, but the sheep are grazing and it reminds me so much of Scotland. Um, so it's a toss up between those two. And then the painting that Chani did, the the blue one, my, my um, beach decor, what do they call it? Um, coastal cottage or coastal grandma look. Shannon did a beautiful summer painting of birds and the ocean and sand. And that will go up when summer comes. So I still have spring, but um, if I can find, they didn't purge my uh, all my pewter wear and all my copper and all my blue and white dishes. I think I'll save the blue and white for summer, but I think I might do my, um, my pewter again up there with some other things. So we'll do that together maybe next week sometime. You know, right now, um, I kind of want to talk about my pea soup. I know you all enjoyed that pea soup uh, a video and I know you all like pea soup and probably make it yourselves many times. I've made it before. Moosey used to make it forever, for a long time. He was the soup guy in the family. And you're kind of wondering what this thing is. Well, you know, I have a bit of a problem with the split peas. You know, forever and ever, from time beginning, they always told us to soak the beans or the split peas overnight. And that was something we always did. And then all of a sudden, several years ago, the direction say, well, no, you don't have to soak peas overnight anymore. That all you have to do is use a certain amount of uh, cups of water, put the hot water on the peas and uh, clean them and soak them for maybe 30 minutes for a pound, which is the whole package. And, and then start your process of the soup. And normally that would probably cook for maybe two hours or something, and then you're good to go. Well, you know what? You're not good to go. And one or two of the times ago when Moosey did make the soup, the beans were not soft enough. They had softened a bit, but definitely not to the point where you would enjoy the soup. And I, you know, you spend all that time to, uh, cutting all the veggies up and putting the spices in and it tastes so good and and then in the end when you think it's all ready to go and you're getting your supper ready and you're putting the bread in the oven the the peas are not soft enough well the first night we did have it and Moosey thought it was fabulous he didn't mind it yes he did admit the peas were a little hard I wasn't wild about it. So the next day, you know, the pea soup, all soups to me are always better the second day, even the third. And so the next day I said to myself, you know what? I just don't like this. I cooked it a little more in the morning. Of course, you always add more broth the next day because, uh, you know, the next day it's hard and you're not hard, but it's more solidified and you put more broth in. You keep doing that as it solidifies and cooking it. Well, that second day, I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna pulverize that darn little thing. So I have this immersion blender. And you know what, you guys, if you don't have one of these, you should get one. I looked on here to find uh, what the, the brand name was, but you know, I can look it up uh, probably in my Amazon. I got this, uh, I think two years ago, I think I was talking about it uh, when I was doing a Christmas video about all the international uh, dishes of Christmas. And I was making a Yule cake or something. And I was using my old immersion blender that I'd 
had probably for 20 years. I, I got it on the home show, M Margie and Debbie and I, and I think somebody else, I can't remember who. We went to that show in LA and we, we were on the show. They picked us to be on for a couple of questions that they had asked about where's your wedding gown now. And my wedding gown was made into lampshades and and Debbie's wedding gown was in the barn, the horse's barn. Well, they loved our answers and somehow we got to be on the show. And we, my prize was an immersion blender. I know that's an unsacred tour, I'm sorry, but it, <laughs> we were very proud that we got on. Margie got on too. I forget what she got on for, something she said. But I got a new one two years ago when this broke because I can't live without an immersion blender. I don't have one of those big expensive mixers. I don't bake enough to have that. And besides, my counter space is just to, you know, and putting that big thing away, I don't have the storage either. So um, I make cheesecakes with this. I use it for every single thing that I need. Now, Sabrina and Mikey recently, or Sabrina was here trying to whip up some whipping cream, couldn't find a mixer in the house. It was the day of the purge and she was making a birthday uh, topping for a cake and I received a, a hand mixer in the mail that week <laughs> and I couldn't figure out who it was from and I finally realized that Sabrina was saying you know what you don't have a mixer do you and anyway so I will be using that but I still love this immersion brother so to get back to what I'm trying to say is I took that soup and I put my immersion blender in. Now, mind you, I did have some nice big carrots in there. I had already put lots of ham and there was lots of ham left over from uh, the soup. Matthew had given us this spiral ham. He had us over on Christmas day and we had the ham. So he brought the bone and everything up and I made the soup. As a matter of fact, I have to remember to tell him that I wanna send some soup home with him. It's still good, by the way. <laughs> And so I stuck this in the pot and I thought, well, should I take out the meat first? Should I take out the carrots? And I finally decided, nope. Moose said we can put some kielbasa in if the meat gets pulverized too. So I started away in that pot with my immersion blender. I wish you could taste that soup now. It is so pulverized. Maybe that's not the way pea soup's gonna be. Moosey prefers it the other way. But you know, I even had a cup for breakfast this morning. It was so good. Yes, a lot of the stuff got pulverized, but you know, it made it taste so good. We did add some kibasa afterward. Um, there were still a few chunks of ham uh, that you could taste, but so that's what I had to do. Now tell me your experiences with making pea soup, ladies, because I want to make it again, although I still prefer my French onion soup. Do you have that problem with the peas too, or do you still soak them overnight? So let me know that one. I think I all, I told you all that um, on January 6th, the Epiphany was Mikey's birthday. And they all decided that they were going to go to an attraction in Buena Park in Orange County, Medieval Times. Now, Mikey has had um, year t yearly tickets at, to Disneyland. They go there a lot. They, they take the kids to San Diego Zoo and the Safari Park, and oh, they take them to ballets and, and uh, productions in San Diego. There's so many good things. And they, they're wonderful about exposing the three children to all kinds of things and fortunate enough to be able to do it. And uh, so the kids said they had not been to medieval times and they wanted to go. So Mikey invited Moosey and I to go with them Saturday, just the day before yesterday. What's today? No, it was yesterday. Yeah, today's Sunday. And um, so uh, Moose being um, not able to walk on his own, uh, uses the rollator. And so there are evidently certain tickets and certain areas that you can sit and m maneuver the place. It's kind of a, a stadium indoors, medieval times where they, um, it's a medieval theme and they have horses and knights that charge each other 
with the horses and they put on a show and everything as sort of like a rodeo, but medieval time thing. They're in costumes and they serve up a meal uh, that you eat with your hands, like chicken legs and things. The kids were all excited, couldn't believe all the things. Now, we did take the kids years ago. The last time we went was probably when Mikey was about eight. And then before that, when the other kids, the older children were about that age, when we first moved to California, I remember going then. And it still is going. It's right across the street down there from um, Knott's Berry Farm. So Mikey tried to get tickets for uh, this particular area, but they were all sold out. So he called back and he said, oh, I'm so sorry. This is, you know, we can't. I said, well, you know what? You guys go ahead. And why don't we meet you maybe beforehand or after or whatever? So they decided to do that. And we met them at 11 in the morning. The show was until 2.30. So we drove down and met them at a, a breakfast restaurant called Brogan Yoke. Big, giant restaurant. Fabulous place that serves, oh, the most wonderful things. Monte Cristos and all kinds of pancakes that you wouldn't believe. Um, my favorites are all the different kinds of Eggs Benedict. crepes. Megan had crepes. Her dish was the most delicious dish. But anyway, so we drove down and met them. And um, since it was Mikey's birthday, they had a young guy going around making balloon things. He made Mikey a big hat. In addition to this, we had a little problem getting out of the house. A couple of weeks ago, we had gotten a notice from the Con Edison, the electric company, that the power in our particular area, small area, was going to be out all day yesterday, which was Saturday, from 8.30 in the morning until 4.30 or 5 in the afternoon. Now, that's a long time. We have an electric stove and everything's electric here. so. Plus, uh, you know, our, we have these little heaters too, and it's kind of cold right now, but we were prepared. The only thing I was worrying about was making sure that I was up, which I usually am, to get my coffee in the morning from my electric coffee maker. <laughs> Even Micah was saying, I didn't get mine till 11. I woke up too late. Well, anyway, um, the men arrived, and then I remembered that we had to leave at 10.15. And so I thought, oh my gosh, am I going to get out? Because all of these men were right at the foot of our driveway down there because they were replacing a telephone pole. Now that's no little job. That meant there were about 10 different trucks. I'll bet there were 25 or 30 technicians in the streets with their helmets and, their, and they were putting out the blocking off the road on both sides of our area. But I walked down the driveway, talked to these men, and I said, I have to get my hubby out. I kind of fibbed and said he had to go to a doctor because I was afraid they weren't going to open it up. And they weren't going to. He said, well, I'm sorry. You, maybe we could open this gate and you can go that way. But that would have been a half hour out of our way. And finally he said, can you be out of here by 10? And Moose was not quite ready. And I said, okay, there was only about 13 minutes to go. So I went up the hill, huffing and puffing, said, Moose, quick, get ready, get in the car. We gotta be down there. They're gonna let us through. They're gonna move some trucks and move something to let us out. So we, so we did get out and I thanked them profusely. 
Well, right before we were ready to leave to come back, which was about one o'clock, Micah called and said, uh-oh, are you on your way back soon? And we said, we're about ready to leave. He said, well, there's a telephone pole in our driveway. <laughs> now, a telephone pole. Well, there were also these big boxes. It was one of those ones with a lot of the big electrical boxes on top of the telephone pole. So he said, I don't know whether you can get home or not, but they say maybe they might be finished in half an hour. So we kind of delayed a little bit and then left. By the time we got back up, we parked the car, everything was blocked off, but the telephone pole was up. It wasn't uh, laying in Micah's driveway, thank heavens. So Micah came running down and we, we had to go in from another side. So he drove my car around. Well, long story short, we did finally get back in, but we were so cold in the little cottage here, all the lights were off and it is dark when all the lights are off because we do back up to a hill. The front, we look down over the valley and a hill, but our bedroom's in the back. So what we did was, Moosey and I jumped into bed. We have this wonderful big uh, feather comforter that we just pulled up with the flannel cover and we had those covers up over our noses and he and I fell asleep, it was about two o'clock and the lights woke us up at about 20 of five, almost 4.30. So that was our story of yesterday, a fun day, a strange day, but fun. I think I only have three more things here that I really want to talk about. Um, <clears throat> I get so involved with my little talks here with you. I feel as if you're my friends and that we can just go on and on, except you don't do much talking. I'm doing all the talking, but I'll leave a couple of things out. But I did want to tell you about some new makeup that I picked up. I had felt, and I think I told you this, that my, um, my face was getting a little too ghostly white or something. I didn't, I needed some color to look a little bit more healthy. I, pr I always have a ruddy complexion anyway. Maybe as I get older, I'm not so ruddy anymore, but I wanted more of, of a colorful look. So I did pick up something that Tamara um, had mentioned as one of her favorites foundations on her Tamara's Timeless Beauty. And I did uh, get, it, get it, and it was the Wet n' Wild Dewy, let me see if I can read this, um, Dewy Luminex Foundation Fond de Tente Wet n' Wild Photo Focus Dewy. And I got this, and I think it's only like five or six or seven dollars, very reasonable, soft beige. And you know, it's quite different. And I, as I can tell when I look on, um, on a Kleenex, if I've wiped a little bit off my neck. I'm gonna show you the applicator. You don't have to put it on your hands. You can just dab it in, see this? You can just dab it on your face here and there, a little up here, and, and you don't have to put much on at all. But I love the extra color. As you can tell too on my eyes, I have been, um, working a little bit with the uh, browns again, the browns and the golds, especially when I wear camels and browns. So the problem with my glasses, look how they, when I took Moosey to the doctors the other day, trying to push him at one point, he wanted to ride in his seat. And and so I pushed him, the, the walk down the hallway at the doctors was kind of long, but look what's happened to, the, they're so wide. I adore my glasses. They're made by BCBG, their prescription, but I love my frames and I love the size, but I do need new lenses. I have bifocals as well, but they're, they're always foggy. Now, the last time I had my eyes examined, I'm a diabetic, as you know, and, and Medicare pays for my uh, eye exams. And the last time it was about two years ago, I think I skipped a year, but the doctor did tell me that there was a bit of, um, I don't know whether it's one eye or both, a bit of, um, what do you call those things that start to come over your eyes? 
but um, that might be the problem again. And you know what? At 85, I don't think I'm, I'm going to worry about it. I can still see pretty well. It's not a real big bother, but I do want to have new lenses put in. They're, they're scratched and they get so fogged up. Um, I hope they can put them in these. And I know that you can correct these by little screws and fix these because they're much too wide. I know I have a wide face anyway, but... Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Friday night, I, I think I told you that up at Colleen and Micah's house, Micah has done this beautiful outdoor patio with an outdoor kitchen and everything. And he built this magnificent pizza oven, brick oven, gorgeous. And he makes pizzas every day, every weekend for the kids. And always when they make pizzas, they holler down, you know, do you guys want a pizza? Well, of course we always do. His pizzas honestly are the best. And the kids make them. He gets this special dough. He doesn't make his own dough. I think he buys dough. And uh, the kids have learned to make the pizzas and you can choose, you send your order up and you he'll make any kind of a pizza. And then he fires them. He has the big long paddle and everything. Well, Friday night, I guess after seeing our video with our Cape Cod uh, honeymoon sweatshirts on, they were laughing and thought it was cute. And um, they made a pizza. Now, I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to put the, the video on. It's just a little short video. Colleen took the video of the, the, somebody making this pizza and then Micah putting it into the pizza oven. And then Brendan delivered it, brought it down. And Moosey and I were in bed anyway. We're always in bed by seven. A lot of times we will have a snacky supper in bed, but normally we won't eat all our suppers in bed. But we were already in bed in our red PJs, matching for some reason or other that night. And <laughs> Brendan took a picture. Well, we were not picture ready. And I said, oh, Brendan, no, no, mom wants a picture, he said. So he took us said, well, get a, get a close up. Don't get what the place looks like here. So he took a picture and it turned out cute. We didn't look great, but the idea was so cute with this pizza. That was the whole idea. So she sent the, the little video and the picture down. So sorry, I'm so Gabby this time, but you're my buddies and I have no other ladies to talk to the past couple days. So, oh, yesterday I was talking to Megan and Sabrina and Lizzie, but they did a lot of talking too. Well, let me ask you, those of you who, you know, they say that um, about half of your viewers are not subscribers. And I think that might be about it with us too. They say that's normal, but perhaps those of you who are not subscribed might like to join us. Join our family to subscribe costs nothing, no obligation. You don't get on a list. I don't have any lists of any kind. All it does is, is makes it easier for you to find us when we go to put up a video or makes me feel good. And it would be nice to kind of get up where all these other people are in numbers of subscribers. I mean, maybe just because we're 85 years old doesn't mean we can't have a bunch of subscribers, does it? So if you'd like to subscribe, please do. It would, it would make us feel good. Thank you for listening and watching, and I hope you'll be there for the next video when I think we'll start some redecorating and um, 
Maybe I'll be making something else again. I can't wait to bake that French onion soup again to begin with. Thank you so much for watching. And I appreciate all your comments and wonderful things that you say about us too. I love you and God bless us all.